Number five on our countdown list is going to be about geoprocessing and model builder. Let's go to a different part of the park, the area around Half Dome, and we'll go ahead and turn on our aerial imagery. Within Yosemite National Park, the Park Service uses GIS to manage the park, but they also use it for search and rescue. If the last known location of a lost hiker was this red bullseye, they can use geoprocessing models to predict where that person may have gone, how quickly they can travel, and the most likely location to find them. If we want to access that model, we can use our catalog window. There's a new home button that'll take you to the project or the map workspace, where your maps, your tools, your analysis results may all be stored. We can then open up that model, and you'll see there's a couple new improvements with Model Builder. First, there's a new pop-up for the tooltips that shows you the input, output, and parameters for each tool without having to open up that tool. For those of you that have mistakenly hit this auto layout button before you were ready and said, oops, that wasn't quite the layout I want, you'll be very happy to know that there is now an undo and redo button that will get you back to what you want. And of course, that will work if you accidentally delete a tool and you want to bring that back. Now, many of you have been asking, is it possible to take the geoprocessing tools and the models and put them onto the toolbars to customize the toolbars? With ArcGIS 9.4, we've enhanced the customization capability so you have access to all of the analysis tools. I can drag and drop the buffer tool or the geoprocessing model that I was just working on for search and rescue onto either my own toolbars or the default toolbars. Now, if you go ahead and want to ex execute this, the challenge I'm going to be faced is, if I start this model executing, we're going to have to wait until it finishes before we can continue the presentation. However, that was the past. With ArcGIS 9.4, there's a new geoprocessing option that allows you to enable background processing. So now, when I start the model running, You'll see a status bar in the lower right-hand corner that'll show me the status of my job. You'll see a pop-up occur when it's complete, but I can continue to work. I can continue and do other things. So let's move on for number four on the countdown list is a new Layers tab. This new Layers tab is kind of like a smart legend that will only show you the symbology in the legend for the features that are in your current visible map. So when I clip on the click on the climbing areas symbol, you'll see they'll flash on the map. Or if I look at the stream symbol, you can see which features are using this particular symbol. Now watch the legend as I pan the map to the east and those climbing symbols go off the map. They'll be temporarily hidden in your layers tab. If we do that again, watch the red and green search and rescue model. It disappears from the map and it's hidden from the layers tab. So we're making it easier to see what's actually in your map. You can also use the Layers tab to turn on and off layers, turn off the imagery, and choose what layers are going to be selectable. The Layers tab is a nice innovation to complement the traditional table of contents. Let's go back to Yosemite Valley and take a look at number three on our countdown list. The park rangers doing the search and rescue may need to know where are the helicopter landing zones. We turn that layer on doesn't have the best symbol. So number three on our countdown is the ability to change symbols, not by browsing through 20,000 different symbols looking for the right one, but by doing a search. I'm interested in a green push pin, and you can find the symbol you want. Or better yet, better yet, type in the word helicopter, find the symbol I want, quickly change that to the right size, and we're done. As you start using 9.4, you'll discover that it is far more efficient to search for symbols than browsing through more than 20,000 symbols that are included with ArcGIS. Number two on our countdown list is about time. What do I mean by that? We're making it easier to make temporal maps with ArcGIS. If you look at the burn history, 20 years worth of forest fire burn histories, you'll see each feature has a date. As a side note, the map tips can now support complex expressions across multiple fields, making it easier to report information back to you as you use the map tips. But where we're going with this is I want to open up the layer properties for this fire history layer 
and you'll see there's a new time tab. I can enable time on this layer and set the fields that are going to provide our date and timestamp. I can do it for this layer as well as for the fire ignition layer. And now you'll discover there's a new system clock, a time clock for ArcMap that allows me to set the date and time to 1991 and the previous 12 months. And we can see what fires burned or were ignited during that 12-month period. We could take this to 1994, 95, 96, 97, and so on. ArcGIS 9.4 is becoming time aware. And finally, what is number one on the list? The answer is easy. It's fast base maps. To understand what this means, I want to go back to the complex geologic map we started with. And as I pan the map, I need you to recall exactly how ArcMap updates the display. You see this big, white, empty rectangle. I release the mouse, and it redraws each layer sequentially. As an alternative to this, I'm going to go in and create a new base map layer. I'm then going to select every layer in my table of contents that I want to participate in this new base map. We're going to take those layers and drag and drop them into this new type of group layer. It's a special group layer, which is called a base map layer. And now as I pan the map, notice the refresh. It's a continuous redraw. And if that's not good enough, enable the Roam key and start roaming around, and you'll see exactly what it means to have fast base maps. These were the first nine innovations with ArcGIS 9.4, and there's going to be lots more to come. Thank you.